in the current research we're doing on youth unemployment in Europe, one of the key predictors associated with young people becoming unemployed is actually having come from a household where nobody in the past has been working. This is a very clear cause associated with finding themselves in a situation of poverty. A second cause we've identified in some of the recent analysis is to do with the difficulties uh, some young people, especially in the south of Europe, have had in moving out of the parental home. And with the impact of austerity, some of those young people have made that move, have been most vulnerable compared to other parts of Northern Europe that haven't experienced that, that vulnerability in the same way. So the main causes of poverty in the context of Europe has been associated with unemployment, worklessness, coming from households with a variety of social disadvantages, including single parents, uh, people with disabilities, and uh, uh, people with large families. These have been some of the main causes that uh, are experienced in European context. Policies that can be used to address the poverty that young people in Europe face can be examined on three levels. One is the labour market, uh, two is education and three is families. So policies that are addressed at families are often to try and bring disadvantaged families to have more access to get the parents back into work or to support them so that intergenerational legacies of disadvantages aren't perpetuated. The second frame of policies are to do with education about what needs to be done to address particular groups of young people who face a number of difficulties in either staying in education and staying on. And the European Union, for example, have a series of policies to try and reduce early school leaving so that we don't generate a lot of young people with no qualifications because this creates a very dualised, polarised market. And the third important policy is around what's happening in the labour market itself. And the minimum wage has actually been a very important policy in a lot of countries to try and ensure that when people do enter the labour market, they're actually getting paid at a reasonable rate. But that in itself may be not enough, and there's been a lot of campaigns to go beyond the minimum wage to talk about a living wage, because one of the big characteristics we find are people who are in work are what's called now the working poor and what consequences that has. But they are three levels of policies that are important to address at multiple dimensions of how poverty is affected. These are really important initiatives to understand how international organisations are working together. And for example, some of the work we've contributed to in terms of research, being research has worked with the ILO on their um, decent work projects and conferences that's related to fairness at work. So on one level, these are very important that we see this level of collaboration between the organisations. Essentially, one of the biggest problems is the enforcement and implementation of some of these rights and how people can actually um, realise them. And national governments often really don't like being told what to do, whether it's by international organisations or uh, even European organisations, because they prefer to say we have a specific set of problems we want to address in our own way. So I think it's the actual... The aim is excellent and should be supported, and it's about how we make that be realised at the local level. That's the really key issue about enforcement.